Welcome back. Grant County is looking for an engineering firm to help connect the fairgrounds to the Moses Lake sewer system. County commissioners agreed Monday to find a firm after the Moses Lake City Council recently voted four to three to change a city policy requiring properties to be annexed by the city if they connect to the city utilities. The change exempts the fairgrounds from the requirement. State Department of Health officials set an April 30th deadline for the commissioners to decide on changes to the fairgrounds septic systems. The state officials claim the septic systems are affecting the groundwater in the area. When the resolution is finalized, county officials plan to seek grants to help fund the construction of the sewer pipe. Engineers estimated the project will cost about a million dollars. Two people were injured in a collision on State Route 243, about 13 miles south of Mattawa. Dolores Galloway, an 88-year-old Yakima woman, was driving a 2005 Ford 500 west on State Route 24 when she reportedly failed to stop at a stop sign at the SR 243 intersection and struck a 2005 Nissan pickup truck heading north. According to the Washington State Patrol, Galloway was airlifted by MedStar to Cadillac Medical Center in Richland for her injuries. The driver of the pickup truck, Antonio Mendoza, a 66-year-old Union Gap resident, was injured and taken to Cadillac. The State Patrol issued Galloway a ticket for failing to stop at the stop sign. At least three windows were shot by someone with a BB gun in Moses Lake during the weekend. A woman reported hearing possible gunshots Saturday night in the 900 block of South Balsam Street. The woman found a small hole in a window of her residence, as well as a hole in the windshield of a vehicle. Early Sunday morning, a second person reported finding a hole in the window of a pickup truck in the 200 block of East 9th Avenue, about a block away from the other damaged windows. Anyone with information is asked to contact the Moses Lake Police Department at 509-764-3887. In Northwest News, a crumbling cliffside shows no signs of stopping in one Washington community. And as the landslide gets worse, there's a new round of warnings and a rush to get everything out. Como's Russ Bowen has the details. Power crews turned the electricity back on to one of three evacuated homes. This comes as the slide that started last Friday continues to expand. The best perspective from the air. It definitely has grown. Um, quite a bit and even over the last couple of days, so it's definitely still moving, that's for sure. It's unusual. Typically slides like this settle down in a few days. In this case, the city says it could be weeks. That means a quick move for the renters of this million dollar home. We would like folks to be able to get their belongings out when possible and our windows here, but we just don't know how long that window will be open. There are still a lot of unknowns. I was told basically to just get a bag ready just in case anything else happens. People who live very close can just wait, hope, and maybe help. Just trying to make sure that the families that are being displaced are okay. Uh, that's obviously our biggest priority. Despite their own worries. It's always a little scary to know that at any point in time, a cop car can pull up to my house and say, hey, you guys have to leave. An incredible video shows what some firefighters come up against and the other lengths that other firefighters go to help strangers and each other. Reporter Sarah Sidner has the story. A terrifying moment. A firefighter climbs to the roof of a house to help put out a raging fire inside. Instead, he helplessly plunges into the inferno. The reaction from witnesses says it all. People were all just shot by the firefighter just falling into that uh, hellish pit, the fire. Cell phone video captures the accident from multiple angles. Captain Pete Dern was attempting to vent the roof. It's a technique often used where a firefighter cuts a hole in the roof to release dangerous gases and smoke to make it safer for colleagues to fight the fire on the ground or attempt a rescue. But in this case, it was the firefighter who needed rescuing when the garage he's on collapses. Captain Dern is caught inside for several minutes before he's pulled out. He's conscious, but more than 65% of his body is burned. Remnants of his uniform, his charred uniform burnt, uh, 
but would kind of tell a story just by looking at it, what, what the hell he went through in those three minutes. Captain Dern, a 25-year veteran of the Fresno, California Fire Department, is alive but relying on a respirator to breathe. Very traumatic time for the fire service and for the Fresno Fire Department. We uh, are a family, uh, brothers and sisters, and uh, as you can see here, we rally around each other. And that's going to do it for us here at I-501 News. We want to thank you for watching, and we'll see you again tomorrow.